In the game Braid, your character can travel backwards in time, retracing the same path you've traveled. Likewise, in the game Celeste, Madeline is chased by copies of herself. This video will demonstrate a new extension for GDevelop called Shadow Clones, which will enable you to implement these same game mechanics, as well as other possibilities. Let's get started. This is Tristan with Victorious Games. The Shadow Clone extension can be used in a, many different ways. The first one we're going to look at is a game mechanic similar to the game Snake or Tron, where your player leaves a trail behind and you can make this grow. Every time you eat a piece of food, your, your snake grows. Or it could be, be like in Tron, where you're trying to cut somebody off and block their progress. And whoever runs into um, a wall or runs into their own body uh, loses the game. You can also use this extension to make your character seem like it's moving faster. Like for a dash, you can do a, a, a motion blur effect. If you want the effect similar to what we saw with Celeste, you can use a few shadow clones that are spaced apart and they will basically chase each other and you can make conditions for when they touch to cause damage or game over uh, whatever the strategy of your game is. In order to implement the game mechanic used in Braid you'll have to understand how this extension works. Let's look at the debugger for this active game with the one primary object here and these two shadow clones that are following it. So the debugger is a very powerful tool. You'll want to get comfortable using it. What this extension does is it stores all the data of the primary objects as object variables. So right now we have one primary object and we have these two shadow clones. The shadow clones have a small amount of data. They say how the frames they are behind the primary and their order. So this is the first one that's following right behind it and that's 100 frames behind. And the second one is this one. That's the second that's the second clone. 200 frames behind. But all of the data that is um, used for this extension is stored in the primary object. If we go down to this variable called object history, it has a lot of child variables. In fact, it has one child variable for every frame behind. So you can see this is five frames worth of data. And it should have Let's go to the bottom, 200 frames. So there's 200 frames full of data, and each frame has the X and Y position that the primary object had, the angle, animation frame, the scale of X and Y, and the width and height that the primary object had 200 frames ago. And this is similar to how the game Braid worked, is by re recording all of the game state for every frame. So if you wanted to make a game where you could teleport your character back a certain number of frames, you could reference a frame. This one's 100 frames back, and you can set your character position to these positions, and that is the location and the other state of 100 frames ago. And that'll help you implement a time-based mechanic in your game. Let's look at how you would use this extension in your game. I opened up the platformer default example and the first thing you want to do is install the new extension. You go to the project manager, functions, behaviors, and search for new extensions. And if you search for clone, you'll find the animate shadow clones extension. And it's useful for you to read this so you understand a little bit more how it works. Here's some notes that are, are important. For the Shadow Clones to work, this action must be run every frame. The Shadow Clone object cannot be the exact same object as the primary object, 
However, it can be a duplicate object, and that's what we're going to do in this example. And if you are going to match animations, the animations obviously have to, to line up uh, uh, numerically. Okay, the extension is now installed. Let's add the shadow clones to this player. They're going to follow this player object. I'm going to make a duplicate of the player object. And instead of calling it player2, let's just call this, this will be the shadow clones object. It's the exact same object, the exact same sprite animations and everything. Let's go into our events. We need something that's going to run every frame. And we're going to click on the actions, add action. And the extension will be found under other actions. In the very bottom, animate shadow clones. And you basically have two actions to choose from. The animate shadow clones that, that will follow the path of a primary object. And this bottom one is what you're going to use if you want the shadow clones to be deleted when you delete your primary object. All right, this is the action we're going to do. Choose the object the shadow clones will follow. So they're going to follow the player. And here's the shadow clones. Let's just do 10 shadow clones. The number of frames between each shadow clone, let's do one. And are, do we want them to fade out? I'm going to say no. And then the uh, layer, base layer, and this is optional. Now these booleans here are very important. Do you want the shadow clones to match the, these different states of the primary object? So I'm just going to say yes for all these. If you wanted to use a shadow clone that looked a lot different than your primary object, for instance, you could do shadow clones that were footsteps or dust clouds or pretty much anything other than the primary object, and you may not want it to match all of these states. Okay, let's see if this works. There we go. We have our shadow clones. If I was to maybe work on this game a little bit more, I think what I would do is only activate the shadow clones during a dash. So normally you wouldn't see any shadow clones, but maybe a horizontal dash is implemented with a tween, and I want the player to dash, and those shadow clones will kind of give you that feeling of traveling super fast and making your movement seem really, really uh, impactful. That's it. That's all you have to do to get the shadow clones working. The shadow clone extension copies a variety of states of the primary object. So that includes the scale of width and scale of height, the angle of the object, and the animations. So let's look at a different animation. Let's talk about when you want to delete your primary object. In this example, if you right click on the primary object, it'll delete all the shadow clones as well. Let me show you briefly what the code for that looks like. This very bottom event is where we decide to delete the shadow clones. So for each and every instance of primary object, we check if the right mouse button is down and that the cursor is over the primary object. And if so, we run this function. This function is the one I mentioned earlier that delete all shadow clones that are linked to the primary object. And make sure you do that before you delete the primary object. Otherwise, the links will be deleted. The controls for this example game include the ability to drag the primary object you can also control the primary object with the arrow keys, so down, left, up, right. That's helpful for testing games like Snake or Tron. You can also change the animation. This primary object only has two animations, the drill and the little monster here. 
and you can always pause the animation. I also want to brag about these slider objects, which I created in a different extension called the draggable slider. One quick warning about using the opacity fade. Remember that there's only 255 units of opacity. So right now I have 100 shadow clones, or a fade rate that's quite high, so that's 4,000. So while you only see these few objects, if I take the fade rate down, you'll notice there is actually the full 100 objects there. They were just invisible the whole time. Keep that in mind with your fade rate, that your fade rate times your shadow clones should never be over 255, otherwise you're just drawing invisible objects. If you want to see more extensions like this and more videos, please subscribe to this channel. If you are interested in building these extensions, I'm going to be making a video about a very simple extension called Face Forward, which will make your sprite face the direction that he is traveling. And that should be a pretty easy one for me to demonstrate the basics of building extensions. That's all for today. See you guys later.